Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, rejoining our crew here in orbit of the moon. Um, now that our small emergencies have been sorted out, we've spent a, uh, a couple of days here uh, waiting for our orbit to uh, take us over uh, Rosalina Memorial Station. There it is. There's our orbital track. So it will be a, a little bit of a minor correction to make the whole thing work again, but we're going to start this off by uh, unlocking food, water, and oxygen in the main portion uh, of our crew module here, and then we're going to go ahead and start EVAing our crew over because I have not made the necessary changes to the spacecraft yet to make that a crew tube, uh, nor do I think I can. There's like a two meter limitation on that. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm pressing the T key and I'm not getting SAS to turn on for a Kerbal on EVA. So uh, I am running in version 1.1.3, which might explain why that's not working for me, but I've never known it to be a thing. But then again, I don't think I ever honestly tried either. So, you know, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Anyway, uh, there's Valentina, bored, fantastic. All right, and uh, again, uh, John Oliver, get him out. RCS pack is go. And uh, how many crew do I want to put in the very bottom? I guess I probably should have put the engineer in the top can. They're kind of the mission critical uh, staff here. And uh, Dimitri, I think, is our last holdout here. There we go. We'll put Dimitri down low. I don't know. They Kerbals have mass. It's just not very much. So, oh, grab. That was a, a little bit of a, a rough bonk, but all right. Board. Fantastic. Uh, I did just double check our fuel. Uh, it looks like we're all good to go. We're going to go ahead and open up just this one for now and uh, undock. How about this one? Undock. There we go. RCS and SAS. Let's just pull ourselves away a little bit here. Get some clearance. Probably fire up a comms activate. Now that that's not a thing, we'll go ahead and... Uh, yeah, might as well open up this fuel tank too, and our food, water, oxygen, and might as well get these going. Probably should have done that up here too, huh? Oh, why is electric? No, that's lithium hydroxide. Electric charge is full and topped. We are, we are good to go. This tank will certainly need to be opened up, and we'll go ahead and activate our engines also. Just a uh, quick check, make sure all of our engines are unlocked and all of our fuel tanks are opened up. Yeah, everything there checks out pretty good. Our tanks inside the uh, crew cabins also look good. So we'll set our target for uh, Rosalina Memorial Station and then uh, start to plot out an initial descent node. It's uh, 100 and some change meters per second, but we uh, might as well go ahead and face into the node and give a uh, quick little tap on the RCS to pull us away from our mothership and let it drift away slowly in the night behind us. And uh, I will now turn you over to old me for live commentary. All right, we're about two minutes out from our approach node. I'm double check with the map, see how much we've wandered off. Now it looks like our course might take us right over. We're actually gonna adjust it out just a bit, allow for rotation of the moon. Uh, I will probably be, probably be correcting against that directly after landing. So a minute 49, we'll just uh, start off on the RCS. Current thrust to weight ratio is 1.55. That is not phenomenal. Uh, considering our purpose, but we are completely full of fuel and we're down an engine. All right, ullage, 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 all green, light them up. Just a uh, quick bit of spetty uppy bits to uh, power through the lowest bit of PWR that we have for our initial deorbit burn. This is also uh, where I'm hoping to get most of the targeting figured out, the uh, more that we can make. Uh, corrections, radial, radial in, radial out, and uh, normal, anti-normal here, the more efficient it will be versus having to do it later, like uh, I have on so many other of these approaches, but uh, I think I've got it lined up. Anyway, uh, here's old me to plot the rest of this. All right, 1657 meters per second. Says that burn will take 10 minutes. Uh, that's a lot longer than I would like, especially since we need to do it all in lead, because that is uh, as best I can reckon directly over our target. Uh, we'll make corrections as necessary. We'll just get ourselves 
pointed here on the node. Not the most maneuverable craft in the world, but what we do have is a uh, metric ton of delta V showing 5,000 meters per second currently. That's almost enough to bring us down and then get us back into an orbit for a rendezvous without refueling. Probably not going to chance it. We got a good stockpile of fuel on the surface, so we will probably be utilizing that. Of course, uh, this plan is subject to change. So let's just uh, get ourselves around close to this node. I'm probably going to let it run down to about the seven minute mark or so. Which seems so, so far away. All right. Map, quick save. Please let this work. Of course it's gonna work, Val is on board. Level out this roll. Engines are ulled. Ignition. Here we go. Now, considering this lander's roll and its uh, let's roll like its job and its uh, capacities and tonnage, really, I guess is the better way of framing that. I think a uh, second revision pass will certainly see uh, upgraded thrusters um, on all axes. Really, it was. A little sluggish until we got well below the halfway mark on uh, fuel, but uh, I guess here I am spoiling it for you. I did most of this approach on map view, as you can probably tell. Just a quick check there to make sure we weren't off balance. I'm never 100% certain that I've actually unlocked all the fuel tanks, before. but uh, any little excuse I can find to blame my bad piloting on something else, I, I, I will find it. So. Uh, yes, anyway, uh, upgraded thrusters, definitely high on the priority list. Um, it did not turn as well as I would like, although some of that may have been due to the inevitable frame rate uh, drop that we encounter when we come into uh, Rosalina Station. But uh, here we are pushing our periapsis, or I guess apoapsis, out ahead of us just to make sure that we have the cross range to actually bring us over the station. And uh, satisfied with where we're at, I will replot the node and uh, shut the engines down and time warp in a little bit. We don't have to do this all in one burn, thankfully. But uh, with the new node set up, gives us a much more accurate, well, or revised accurate uh, burn time allotment as far as our approach. But if we uh, basically burn into the node, we'll still come down way short of the facility itself, so we will be angling above that vector, and uh, also making some corrections um, due south, I believe, uh, to try to bring us across that facility. I, I may have been a little overly ambitious in how much the moon was going to rotate underneath us. No surprise there. Uh, I thought I should be able to see the facility by now. This is as much zoom as I will get. Uh, in this particular map view. Surprise, surprise. But uh, even tapping F4 bunches and bringing up the facility. But uh, in adjusting this and taking a look at where the uh, apoapsis now lies, it seems that we are very, very short indeed. And uh, also need to adjust uh, heading due south. So we will uh, pull on some of these node strings and give us a good node to adjust to bring us right over the top of it or at least uh, from what I can tell, based on my very limited abilities to zoom this map in. But there's the node plotted and executed. So now I will place another node over the facility, double checking our altitude. Now uh, it does check out showing like 20 some odd kilometers. So all we have to do is nail this node and there's the facility coming up uh, with those reticles down there. So now that I have uh, some visual way to track our progress, I can uh, adjust our heading and try to put the retrograde vector uh, directly over the uh, target anti-vector there. I guess it's, it's not moving, it's kind of a weird thing to use, but yeah. Uh, at least now I have some visual cue to uh, line up with my nav ball. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of that node, I don't think I really need it anymore, and now it's just a matter of... Uh, trying to level off our approach and make sure that we're coming down right on top of the facility. We're almost there, but this is the part where 
I really wish I did have upgraded thrusters. I know in sped up footagey bits it looks all very smooth and uh, very quick to respond, but it, it was not. Uh, this would have just sped up about four times, so it's uh, it was really kind of a sluggish crawl trying to get this thing to point in any other direction. Um, I really wish I had just gone for the bigger thruster ports from the get-go. But uh, I guess the next time I'm building one of these in a live show, please remind me, more thruster is always better, even if it does kind of chew on your Delta V figures a little bit. And uh, now it's coming down to just the pulsing of the engines, trying to bide time in our limited free fall here at the moon to make sure that we come down right about to where I would like us to, which is uh, far enough away from the facility where we can unhook this thing after it has been fueled and uh, not be in the way of any of the reconstruction efforts I plan on undertaking. Uh, I guess I've stalled that descent a little much because now we're having to make some rather serious corrections, but uh, I guess I had planned on refueling this on the surface from the get-go. Had I done this landing a lot more efficiently, we probably could have done a clear descent and then a return to orbit without the need for fuel. But uh, we're coming up on final approach here, so I will turn you over to old me for live-ish commentaries. All right, final approach now. 230 meters off the surface. Frame rates in single digits quite easily. This is always fun. But we're just going to try to pulse these engines until we can get a little bit closer. I think we're on track for right about where we want to set down. We can just use these engines to stall and bring us some time. Maybe go up just a bit. No big deal. Nope, other way. Can we push this way just a little bit? Hundred and seventy meters. Still not quite where I want it to be, but we got plenty of fuel. We're definitely gonna have to top these, these tanks off a bit before we uh, try to make it back to orbit with this thing. But that's a long way down the road, so we're just not gonna worry about it right now. And this is the uh, obligatory bit where I was trying to concentrate a lot on putting this thing down safely and not tipping it over, like the last two things I've tried to land. So uh, I obviously forgot to add duration. So uh, I've sped it all up in post for you to make it seem a lot smoother and a lot uh, easier to watch than the rest of the landing that follows now. All right, 50 meters, mark. Nice and steady, Val. Come on. Nice and steady. Twenty five meters. Sixteen. meters. Too much lateral, come on. <laughs> A little hop at four meters. Uh, touchdown! And we're stopped. And nothing blew up! This is amazing. And uh, yeah, I think we're close enough to run a link here to here. Oh... Ooh, sweaty palms. Let's take a quick save. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, EVA our engineer. Uh, you totally got out on the wrong side. Why would you do this to me? Equip. Equip. 
Yeah, nice and gentle. There you go. Yeah, do the frame rate wiggle. Perfect. All right, well, we're going to get this thing linked up, and then uh, we're going to start doing our little bits of reconstruction here and uh, try to get this base operational. Uh, link? Nope, not unplug. Link. There you go. And we'll just go ahead and use this as an intermediary. I think all the fuel we need is in the one that is not hooked up, however. But uh, hopefully we will be disposing of a lot of these uh, parts, probably this module, and uh, doing a lot of retrofitting here and some of the skills that I have acquired uh, on our expedition to Mars. Link to kink. Excellent. We can now draw food and power and, most notably, uh, life support. And uh, all of these parts now switch to a single core, which doesn't really help us a whole lot. So we still got this is a separate thing. I'm pretty sure this has become a separate thing. All that over there, all separate things. So uh, we're going to work to do a little bit of consolidation and such. But uh, we'll leave that all for next episode. But uh, in the meantime, we, uh, we have a hero here who needs to turn off her RCS pack. Turn to face the camera and a uh, plant a flag so that uh, she can get promoted, of course, when she gets home. Will be an absolutely necessary thing. But uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.